Okay, now we're going to do a demo on center of mass. Uh, what I have is an object that is comprised of piecewise different objects. We have a sphere here, and I've already measured its mass at 5 grams, and its radius is 1.25 centimeter. We have a rod with a mass of 43 grams, and then I'm going to measure the length of that uh, right now. And then I have a mass, a big heavy sphere here, with a mass of 202 grams and a radius 3.8. And I'm going to find the uh, center of mass of this conglomerate object by doing a summation. So I want to illustrate that to you, how to do that. So first of all, let's measure the total length of this right here. The total length of it is going to be uh, 52 centimeters. The other thing I would want to know is that when I take this and I screw it in, how much of the rod, of this rod, goes in there? So I'm going to measure this. And it comes out to be about 1 point, about 1 1.2. So 1.2, almost equal to the radius of this. So 1.2 of this rod, okay, 1.2 centimeters of the rod goes into the little hole. So I'll screw this in now, okay? And then how much of this goes in the other, uh, into the bigger sphere? And it comes out to be 3.65, 3.65, this length here. Almost equal to the, the radius of the sphere itself, okay? So how am I going to calculate the center of mass of this? Well, I'm going to take my axis and put it here at the center of this sphere. Okay, I'm going to take my uh, center of uh, the axis and put it at the center of the sphere. Then I'm going to say the center of mass of the system is x of the sphere. We'll call this the first object. We'll call the rod the second object. And we'll call this sphere the third object. So we'll say x1, m1, plus x2, m2, plus x3, m3, divided by the total mass of the system. Okay? So these kind of problems are ones where we don't need to integrate. We could just do a summation because we already know the center of mass of each one. So we can, we're going to do the... Since I put my axis at the center of the small sphere, the x1 is going to be 0. The x2 is going to be the center, the distance of the center of the rod from the, where I have my axis. Well, the rod is 52 centimeters, so half of the rod is going to be 26. But then I have this little amount, the little distance, between, which is 1.25 minus 1.2. Okay? So this little hole here, the empty, is 1.25 minus 1.2, that's 0.05. So the distance from the center of the rod to there is 26.05 centimeters times the mass of the rod, which is 43 grams, plus x3 is the distance between the center of the rod, um, the center of the sphere, to the center of that sphere, which is going to be what? 52 plus this little piece plus that little piece. What's this little piece equal to? You subtract 3.8 minus 3.65, that's 0 0.15. 0 0.15 centimeters. So add 0 0.15 centimeter to 52, and then over here was 0 0.05. So 52 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.05. So that's going to be 0 0.2, right? 0 0.2, so 52.2. So the mass of the 52.2 times the mass of that sphere, which is uh, 202.
okay? Divided by the total mass of the system, which is five grams. Notice that when I was doing this, the mass of the little sphere never came into play. But look, down here, you have to include it. Plus the mass of the rod, 43. Plus mass of that sphere, which is 202. Okay? So let's calculate uh, what that comes out to. 26.05 times 43 plus 52.2 times 202 divided by 5 plus 43 plus 202. Notice that here, I, this was centimeter, this was centimeter, this was gram, gram, and gram. So gram cancels. Gram, gram, gram. They cancel, and I didn't need to change the kilogram. And therefore, my final answer is going to be in centimeters. 46.66 centimeter. Okay? So let's actually see if this... Uh, this uh, instrument here is used to illustrate the concept of center of mass and uh, a binary star systems or a star and a planet. So you, it order, when you order this, it comes already with the center of mass. They've already drilled the hole where the center of mass is. You see, we could put this here. And the binary star system goes around the common center of mass. So this could be a, a huge star and a small star, or it could be a, a star and another planet. And they're revolving around their common center of mass. So whoever manufactured this made this already drilled the hole over there where the center of mass is to illustrate this. So now let's measure the distance from that hole all the way to the edge of the this this sphere right here okay we'll go like this wherever they made it let's see if our calculation comes out reasonable here so it's going to be about 46 here from the edge of the ruler let me, let me use the 10 centimeter mark here oh you know what i gotta get the edge of the ruler here yeah it's, it's better to use the edge of the ruler so we're gonna get 46 so from the, from the edge of the small sphere to where they drilled the hole is 46. From here to where they drilled the hole. There's the center of mass right here. It was 46 centimeters. And then plus, remember, the radius of the sphere, the, the radius of this sphere is 1.25. So it's a 46 plus... 1.25, about 47.25 centimeters. So they drilled the hole about 47 centimeters from the center of the sphere. Our answer is 46.6, so we're about 0.6 off, okay? The reason for that is because there is some irregularities here. And when you look here, there is actually another hole that they've drilled in the actual center to illustrate that that is not the center of mass of the system. The other thing here is that this portion of the rod, notice the portion that's threaded, weighs less because some of the metal is out. So there's some irregularities and other things that throw the calculation off. But again, this illustrates the concept of how you would go about doing something like this if you have a bunch of objects that are coming together and forming another object, how you would find the center of mass of that. Okay? Thank you.